All right. <coughs> All right, now we're learning the Devar Malchut, the words of the Lubavitcher Rebbe from a speech that he gave in, I guess, the beginning of 1992, Tashin Nun Beit, shortly before he had a stroke, which rendered him <coughs> unable to speak. And um, so these words are very, very important. They're very important and very, how do you say, um, <coughs> important to us. It's like, the, uh, the instructions for what we should do now in these times when the Rebbe is not speaking to us anymore. Not speaking to us. <clears throat> <clears throat> so the Rebbe is stressing the importance of the month of Adar. And especially how that importance comes from the fact that Moses was born. And what's the idea of being born? And how everything is being born constantly. And how the whole world and it's really, like we just finished learning in, in Torah or being created constantly. Now, I, this idea is being repeated over and over in Hasidut, but <clears throat> should it only be that we should, uh, how do you say, internalize it, even for a moment? Because it's a wonderful idea, and it's a wonderful idea to think about and to talk about and to philosophize about and to, to, to uh, how do you say, to lecture about, <clears throat> but to actually feel this is that's the goal that everyone should feel and once you feel you're being created by god so that feeling goes away in a minute in an instant because god is creating us every moment in a way that we shouldn't feel him that's that's like a condition of of our being created that we feel separate so as soon as we do feel you know, God is really, wow, he's really, this is amazing. You know, God is really creating me, he's creating everything, right? But then as soon as you open up your eyes, you stop thinking, then you don't feel that anymore. There are people like that are tzaddikim that feel this all the time. <clears throat> when a person does feel this all the time, what happens is externally absolutely nothing, except that he doesn't do bad things and he does more good things. But what's going on in his heart, you can't possibly know. Maybe if you like really observe him, I'm sure that eventually you... <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> but looking at people like, let's say, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, so you see that the person is very unusual, but you can see that he maybe he has certain talents and abilities. Maybe he's just, you know, a very great leader. and a, You can't really tell what's going on inside <clears throat> of a person. <clears throat> <clears throat> maybe after you read everything that he writes and see there's not one mistake and it's all the Torah, he knows everything. So you can say, okay, he's, he's a super genius. I'm sure other people could do the same thing. But I'm sure that the Torah, the new ideas that he had, okay, the new ideas, that, okay, that's new ideas, but other people also have ideas. So his ideas are, uh, they're, they're, how do you say, <clears throat> appealing to a certain type of people, the Chabad. And what's going on really inside of a tzaddik, we really have no idea. But when we read what the Rebbe writes, and the Rebbe's right, and we assume that they're speaking truth, that it's not me writing. I could write the same things that the Rebbe is writing, but it wouldn't, you'd feel it's not really true. It's not really, I mean, I don't know if everybody would feel, there's a lot of huge, ma massive fakers in the world that have billions of followers. <laughs> and so if you, I mean, from my experience, I'm a little bit older than you maybe, I've seen that if a person says, makes up any sort of a, of, of an idea, and he holds with the idea, no matter how false it is, communism, for instance, it's false, it never works, it never will work, it can't work, but if you keep repeating it over and over again with real true enthusiasm, then people will believe you. And it could be millions of people will believe you. And it could be that, I mean, basically that's what all the religions are. It could be that billions of people will believe you. <clears throat> how does it say you can feel all, you can fool all of the people some of the time? And then you can feel some, fool some of the people all the time. <clears throat> <clears throat> but what the Rebbe is trying to do over here, he's trying to tell us that Moses is a totally different person. And every generation, there has to be one type of one person who's like Moses. And the goal of Moses is to try to make everybody into Moses as much as possible. That's the goal. And because Moses was born on the month of others, so the idea of being born 
That's what Moses wants to do. Moshe wants to do to everyone in the world to feel that you're constantly being born. You're constantly being created. And there's no possible way that any human being can understand this. Even the angels can't understand it. It's totally above comprehension. <clears throat> but that's happy. That's happiness. You feel everything is brand new all the time. And God is creating me intentionally. I'm not here just by accident. So he says, okay, that's a whole month of Udder. We said an Udder means, that's the month where the Jewish people, it says that their mazel is strong. And the whole word Udder means something adir, very high and very powerful. That's the way Moses is born. Okay, now we can also, let's get a little more into a little more details. And the seventh day of Udder. Moses was born on the seventh day of Udder. Number seven. <clears throat> Shiva Ba'adr, the seventh day of Adr, Moreh, this indicates Al Hashlem was the Chodesh Adr, on the completion of the month of Adr. Shiva Yamin, seven days Ritzufim, seven days in a row. Shakolim call a Shiva Yame Shavua, which include all the seven days of creation of the week. Shiva Yame Breshis. Yemeya Binya, the days when the world was created. The whole entire world. Spiritual, physical. Kafishayim, like they are in the month of Adar. <clears throat> Shabbat said that in this, Marum as it's hinted at, Shamayla, Vashlemos, that the highness and the completion of this month of Adar is drawn <clears throat> into all seven aspects of the world. Seven days, the world was created in seven days. Now the seven days, that corresponds to the seven Emotions of God. <clears throat> it's called the Spirit of God. And this is also hinted at the name of the month, which the name of the month is Adar. That there's this God being revealed in the world, seven, the days of creation, God being revealed in the seven days of creation. This is also the month of Adar. Adar is Aleph. Dar. Aleph is God. We'll see. Sharoma is Aleph Shachazagilu Aleph. This is revealing the one, Aleph. And the word Aleph also means like the master, Alufo Shalolam, <clears throat> Ba'olam in the world, Liot to be Dar, Dira, Loyat, that God should be revealed here in the world, which that's the whole purpose of Judaism, the whole purpose of the creation. That's why God created man, <clears throat> to reveal God in the world. And especially emphasis on the seventh day of Adar. The seventh day of Adar, this hints at Asiya Dira, this is number seven, like we said, it's the seven days of creation. This really stresses the idea of making a dwelling place for God, La Lufo Shalolam, to the Creator in the seventh days of creation. The Indian said this, Mudgash is stressed also the fact that Moses was born on that day. And he was born also on that, on that day and in that month. The seventh day of Adar. Like the rabbis say, Beshiva, on the seventh day, Moses was born. Benid Mole, a bias, that the house was filled with light. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I, I, miss, I need glasses. <coughs> Besha, not Beshiva. Besha, Shinolid, Moses, when Moses was born, it says the house was filled with light. Hainu, Shalat, Moshe, the birth of Moses, Poelet, it brings about or light, vigiloi, and revelation of godliness in the whole entire house. What does it mean, the house? The house of God is the world. <clears throat> the whole world. Moses brought light to the whole entire world, meaning and purpose to every detail of creation. <clears throat> and this is stressed even more. In what Moses did in the course of his life. That he was born on the seventh day of Adar from that day on until the day that he passed away, which is also the seventh day of Adar. By means of what he did, that he set up the tabernacle in the desert. This was the main completion of the revelation of God in the world. <coughs> True, the Tabernacle was not really like in the world. The tabernacle that Moses made wasn't in the world as much as the Holy Temple. First of all, the Holy Temple was made from rocks and, and, and stone. 
And this was made from wood and from animal hides. So it wasn't as low. And also it kept moving around all the time. It wasn't set in one place. So it wasn't so much in the world. But nevertheless, it was a big novelty that God was in a physical measured place. That's the whole goal of Judaism is to reveal God in every measured, limited place. Could he eat the Bemidrash like it says in the Midrash? Rosh Chodesh Nisan. When there came the first day of Nisan, <clears throat> and God commanded Moses, the Hakim at the Mishkan, to stand up the Mishkan. So that was the last day <clears throat> that he set up the Mishkan. <clears throat> when it was open for business, the Mishkan, the, the, the tabernacle in the desert, it was sent by means of Moses. Why are you afraid? Yisrael, the Jewish people were saying, we made a dwelling place for God. When will the Shekhinah come and dwell inside of what we did? Maybe it won't happen. It says, I have already come to my garden, my sister bride. What does it mean? Omar Rabbi Ishmael Bar Yossi, Lagan Lo Enkativ Khan. It does God is not saying I came to my garden, but I didn't. I'm sorry, it doesn't say I came to the garden, but my garden. When Moses built the holy temple, he built the tabernacle. So God was supposed to be revealed in the tabernacle. He was supposed to be revealed. So the Jewish people said. Is it really going to happen? God's going to come and reveal himself in what we did? So God said to them, I've already done that before. It's not going to be the first time. This is my garden. The world is my garden. Le ganuni. Ganuni means a wedding canopy. The place where I was in the beginning. God's presence is not up in the heavens. God's main presence is in this physical world. God's presence is in heaven because he wants He's waiting until <clears throat> to be revealed in this in every aspect of the physical world. It begins in the Holy Temple. The main Shekhinah, that's the way it was when God created the world. Adam was here. God was in the world with Adam. The whole world was a holy place, and Adam was here to make it more holy. <clears throat> the main Shekhinah, Ki Ika Shekhinah, it wasn't in this physical world, when God created the world, I was here. That's my main place. Kivin shechata Adam. As soon as Adam sinned, nistalka shechina. God went away. His, his presence went away from <clears throat> up to the first heaven. God, all of a sudden, when Adam sinned, he created heaven. There was no heaven before that. Heaven. This physical world was pure godliness. God wanted to be even more pure. As soon as Adam sinned, so. <clears throat> You know, it's like Henry Ford makes this big factory. In fact, and the first the car that comes off of the of the, of the line is nothing works. The car blows up, so he just goes back up into his office. And someone comes and knocks on the door, Mister Ford. Not only the second car also blew up. He says, "Oh, I'm going home." Someone comes to his house. The third car also blew up. He says, "Well, I'm I'm leaving the state. I'm leaving the city. I'm leaving." The same thing with with God. How <laughs> deal? Adam come, Adam sinned. God said, ah, that's it. I'm, I'm going up to the office. I'm going to first heaven. Then they came and said, this generation after Adam also sinned. God said, oh, man, I'm going home. It went from the first heaven to the second heaven, further and further away, God's presence. Chata <clears throat> Mitzrayim, as soon as the, 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 in Egypt they sinned, the, the Shekhinah went away. This is the whole world is doing sins, right? The world is sinning. God creates the world, and the world is sinning. There was the flood, the Egyptians. It says that the Shekhinah went to the seventh heaven, connect them, and the opposite, then they stood up, seven Sadiqim. And the seven Sadiqim, they brought the, they had the, down the earth. We're talking about Mitzrayim in the time of Abraham. And they stood, and they started bringing the Shekhinah back to the world. Abraham, he brought the Shekhinah, God's presence, from the seventh heaven to the sixth, Right? So they called up the, the Henry Ford and they said, listen, the cars are starting to work. He says, okay, I'll leave my hiding place in the mountains and I'll come down to the ground. 
And they said, the next car also works. They said, okay, I'll leave from the ground. I'll come to, and from the, the, the desert, I'll come into a city. And he said, that from the city, he comes into uh, the, the, the Europe. And from Europe, he comes to America. Finally, he comes back to his office. The same thing with God. As soon as he saw Abraham, oh, here's a person that's working. He's doing what, I'm, what I wanted. You know what? I'll, I'll get a little bit closer. Finally, it came to Moses. Moses, he was the seventh, and now on number seven, our dear Harita Felyonim, he brought the Shekhinah down from the upper worlds to the lower worlds. Ahmed Moshe, Moshe, he came down and brought it to the world. So that's what the, Moses said to the Jewish people. It's not a new thing. God was here in the beginning of the creation. The reason he seems so far away is because no one did what God wanted. So God's presence was removed from the world. Don't think that God was gone. God just he gave up on the world. But the main thing that God wants is the world. When Moses came and built the tabernacle, so God re re returned to the world, and not just in the holy temple, in the, in the tabernacle, but inside of every Jew. Permanently. <clears throat> well, the Hosef and Tehran, she had the beginning of the, the standing of the, of the Mishkan in the seven days of the, cre of, of the seven days of the, the, how do you say, the inauguration. That Moses was... <clears throat> says this, there were seven days before the first day of Nisan, there were preparation days. All these days were in the month of Adar. This was the seven last days in the month of Adar. From the 23rd day of Adar until the end of the month of Adar. So the end of the month of Adar, those were the days that prepared the tabernacle to be, to accept the revelation of God, like it was in the beginning of the creation of the world. Islam, we can say in the beginning of the month of Adar is stressed even more and more powerfully this Adir this Aleph Dar this Aleph, the first letter of Adar the oneness of God in the beginning that's above the world Adir B'marom like it says Adir B'marom Hashem God is high up in the heavens where is this one's 86 this is <coughs> We had this before. I think it's a sentence from, from Psalms, I think, but I can't. Okay. Where is this? Oh, here it is. Here it is. In the, so that's the first day of Adar. In the continuation of the month, and mainly on the Seventh day of the month when Moses was born, <clears throat> how much more so near the end of the month, on the last last day, the last week of <clears throat> the month of Adar. What was the last week of the month of Adar? When Moses was preparing the, whole, the, 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 the tabernacle. These were the seven days of inauguration, were the last seven days of the month of Adar. He was preparing for the revelation. Uh, in the <clears throat> Mishkan, in the tabernacle. Murgash, this is especially stressed because this was drawing down God in the world. Aleph, oneness of God, Dar, being revealed here by means of the Mishkan. <clears throat> uh, one small example, I mean, you know, we're talking about revealing God in the world, revealing God in the world, God being revealed, Moses revealed in the world. A, a small example of this, of God being revealed in the world, was the Six-Day War. When there was the Six-Day War in Israel, the result, the victory of the Jewish people, everyone in the world saw that it was the hand of God. There was not one person in the world that thought that it was purely the Jewish army, except the leaders of Israel. But Okay, that's a different thing. But everybody, everyone was impressed. Everyone knew that there's some sort of a power of good here that's involved, that's totally incomprehensible, and it's active in the world. It's working in the world. <clears throat> Everyone saw it. Defeated. There were seven, seven big armies. They all attacked it. Right? We were outnumbered, I don't know, 10 to 1, 20 to 1, whatever. They had the best weapons. They had the best everything. And all of a sudden, <clears throat> everyone saw that there's some sort of a... Of a of a force here that's not a force. It's not a force. It, it was for the Jews and against their enemies. Oh, this is not 
something normal. And it's for, it was for non-religious Jews. These weren't Jews that said, yes, it was the Lord that did it. Suddenly they realized that the God of Israel, it's not a religious God. He's somehow or other a creator. <clears throat> and really, if you think about it, in the Six Day War, I'm not, I don't, I'm not a, a political analyst, but a lot of the victory of the Jews in the Six Day War was that they blew up airplanes on the ground. They had these jets that were on the ground. And so there was, in a way, the minimum loss of life that there could be. The minimum loss of life. <clears throat> Quite incredible, right? And after these nations were, were conquered, as we didn't go in and kill everybody and just, you know, ramp, rape and murder and things like that. <clears throat> and like I say, the army and, and the government of Israel, they were not religious people. Suddenly they saw that the God of Israel, it's not like anything else it's not like he was paying back or he was doing something you know for because we were religious and we put on to fill in and we did these things as god did this all this stuff for us and you better watch out for our god no that wasn't that they suddenly realized the whole world realized that maybe the god that's in the bible that creates the world and creates the whole entire universe all the time and it says he gave that maybe he's still active you know and in fact, there was no maybe in anybody's mind. The world was sure. There was no doubt about it. <clears throat> Back then, it was the Israeli government that put the maybe in everybody's mind. But it wasn't everyone. So it's something like that being talked about here, but in a good way. Not necessarily to destroy our enemies. It should only be that you should destroy our enemies. But in a way that it'll be that it'll convince in those days, in those days, I mean, I wasn't even religious back then, so I don't know anything about it. The fact of the matter is, I just read about it. Even the, 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 our biggest enemies suddenly were saying good things. All of our biggest enemies suddenly, they, was, they only had good to say about Israel. But at least in the beginning. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the idea of God, because the God of Israel is creating everybody. He's creating everybody. He's not, we, have, we don't have a monopoly on God. There's one God, and he's creating everybody. But we do have a monopoly on the Torah. We have a monopoly on what's right and what's wrong, on the Torah to teach the world what's right and what's wrong. <clears throat> but to teach everybody how God loves them. That's the month of other. Aleph, to make the oneness of God, Dar, dwell in the physical world everywhere. So that was prepared for in the month of Adar. And the month of Adar was prepared for the first day of Nisan, which that's the day that the tabernacle was revealed, was, was built, and God was revealed in the world. Of Gambasimo, also in the month of the, at the end of the month of Adar, Moses stood up to Mishkan and he, <clears throat> he, he, he was, made sacrifices in it. He did his job and he took it apart every day, seven days. Below Shart of I'm sorry. I'm sorry, no, the, the end of the month of Adar, the month of before before the first day of Nisan. The first day of Nisan, he set up the all the, 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 the tabernacle and he left it. But in the seven days that he was setting it up, which was the last seven days of Adar, it says the Shekhinah wasn't there. Namely, there wasn't revelation of godliness in the world. God was high up in the upper worlds. <coughs> Everybody knew God took them out of Egypt, God gave them the Torah, but they didn't feel it now. It wasn't felt by them now. Kivan Shab Shachavagila, because this revelation of godliness wasn't in the holy temple yet. The Ikram Shacha, the main revelation of godliness in the physical world, was by means of when Moses finally set up the Mishkan and he set up the tabernacle in a way that it was permanent. Bashra Shekhinah and the Shekhinah was there permanently. Hayata, this was when, on the first day of Sivan. And, and, ach, the first day of Nisan, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The first day of Nisan, the first day of Nisan, the, the, the eighth day of the inauguration days of the inauguration. Seven days they made all these inauguration sacrifices and things like that. And on the first day of the month of Nisan, which is the month right after other, <clears throat> that was called the eighth day. That's when they, it was open for business. Nachshon ben Amindadav, he was the, Prince, the, the leader of the tribe of Yehuda, he offered up his offerings. It was that was the day, the first day that the tabernacle was open. Unfortunately, that was also the day when none of an avi rushed in. But um, the, 
<clears throat> that was when God was revealed. <clears throat> By means of the 12 tribes of Israel. From the first day of Nisan, <clears throat> on the first day of Nisan, brought the head of the tribe of Yehuda. He brought his offering. And every day thereafter, for the next 11 days after that, those the first 12 days, a head of another tribe brought his offerings. That's called the Chanukat HaMizbeach. <clears throat> the, Meshach, the 12 days that came afterwards from Rosh Chodesh Nisan until the 12th day in it. One day, a Nasi every day. So there were seven days of preparation of the, what do you, what do you call it, the initiation? I guess that's the better word. The initiation of the temp, of the tabernacle. Those were the last days of Adar. That finished on the first day of Nisan. And then there started 12 days of inauguration. 12, day, 12 days that it was the, the, the tabernacle was actually open and actually functioning. The tabernacle, the, the, the tabernacle was offering up offerings from all the tribes. And that was started on the first day of Nisan. Shabazah, this was hinted at even more, the revelation of godliness in the world. The 12, this hints at not just the seven, which are the seven aspects of God, but these are the 12 different permutations of God's name. Sometimes it's called the 12 Gvuli Alachsan. She'al Yadam, that by means of this, this is created time. How do you get the number 12? It's like, let's see, how do you get... <clears throat> um, uh, give me a second. Yeah, that's right. It's four... Uh, what do they call it? Um, <clears throat> I forget the word. Anyways, four times three times two times one divided by two. Uh, factorial. Four times three because there's four letters in God's name. Yud and then K and then Vav and K, hey, Yud, Hey, Vav, Hey. But there's two Hey's. <clears throat> two Hey's. So really it should be that there's four factorial. It should be that there's 24 different permutations of four letters. Take four there's four different permutations you can make. One, two, three, four, one, three, two, four. Is it? You can do four. But here, because there's two Hays, right? There's, there's the Yud and the two Hays. So you have to divide it in two. So any case, it comes out that there's two, 12 different permutations of God's name, Yud, K, Vav, K. And that corresponds to each one of the months. There's a book which is called... Uh, um, uh, um, B'nai Yisachar. That's what B'nai Yisachar. Anyway, and he he goes into each, each one of the months. He talks about each one of the months. Yeah. <clears throat> 12 months of, of the year. Bishavu is a makom. This creates time and place. That's 12. The 12 gabuli alachs on the 12 different uh, uh, edges of the... If you take like a square, so a square has 12 edges to it, right? Let's see. Let's make a picture here. We got a 12 here. That's a 12 Gvuli al All right, let's do this here. Here we go. 12. Here we go. See? Here we have a square. This is a square. So we have one, two, three, four. And on the bottom also, one, two, three, four. That's eight. And then we have here, one, two, three, four. Every square has 12 edges to it. 12 is a corner uh, edges. And that corresponds to the 12 this is what makes the world <clears throat> is revealed the number 12. So that's the we have the seven days of preparation of the altar. That was in the month of Adar. Seven days of preparation. And then 12 days of use of the inauguration. That's really getting into the world. But the point is, is that it's the whole preparation of the thing came from the month of Adar to reveal the Aleph into Dar, that they should dwell in the world. That's the whole idea of the month of Nisan, the month of Nes, a miracle. And until it becomes Nisi Nisim, there's two nuns in the word Nisan, so it becomes mir miraculous miracles. <clears throat> I think we're going to have to leave this until tomorrow. Let's just do the first one. So, Alderich Mashal, Alderich says similarly also regarding to the strengthening of the luck of the mazal of the Jewish people in the month of Adar. It says, Adar bari mazal. 
Here we just finished talking about this revelation of God, which was done from the month of Adar, the preparation of the tabernacle in the desert, and the re revelation of God to make God revealed in the world, Aleph, to make the Aleph Dar in the world, in the tabernacle, which was revealed as soon as the month of Adar finished. Adar Barimazil. Shekashur, this is connected to the seventh day of Adar, the number seven. <clears throat> All right, let's, let's do a little bit more. Remember we said that the mazal is healthy, the mazal. We said before that the mazal, the word mazal, is referring to the essence of the Jewish soul. That's the mazal that from which comes, ma means to, something comes out, doing something. Mazal means to make drip. It makes the consciousness of the Jews come into the world. Mazal, this is the source of the Jewish soul, is healthy. This is low rock again, not just the source of the soul above <clears throat> when it's in this level of mazal, but also mainly how it's revealed in this physical world, in the body. When we say the mazal of the Jewish people is strong, it doesn't mean just a spiritual thing. It was talking about actual physical in the world. This is also the fact that the word of mazal means to nozel, to drip. This is the source <clears throat> to be <clears throat> dripping from it flowing life in the physical world. Ubamela, so automatically, he's Gabrus Hamazal Bechodesh Adar, the power, the strengthening of the mazal, of the spiritual essence of the Jewish soul. In the month of Adar, this brings about his Gabrus power of the Jewish people, Biyosam Lamata, when they are below. Below. So it should only be, this should be revealed in our soldiers, that they're out there fighting. The, the, the strength of Hashem, the whole world is now coming against them, and we'll, just like all the time in Judaism, and we'll be victorious like we've been up to now. And this is revealing the power of the essence of the Jewish soul into the souls in bodies. But Gambi, Tzaskus, and even when they're in matters of the world, Kamugash, that's the whole idea of the seventh day of Adar, that this is talking about seventh day of Adar, means making a dwelling place, in the number seven, which is the seven days of creation, Aleph in Adar, the Aleph of the world, the oneness of God, in the seven days of creation. Kolomer, in other words, even though that the Mazal refers to the essence of the soul, this is the level of Ayan, which cannot be <clears throat> comprehended, which that's the end, you know, the power and the strength and the health of the Mesirat Nefesh, of self-sacrifice, which is above understanding. Never, and that's what's above, but never listen. This is not a way that we're talking about going out of the world. That Judaism becomes the way to leave the world and we just become spiritual. And all the Jewish people, they sit on mountains. We don't care about the land. We don't care about anything. We just care about God. No, exactly the, exactly the opposite. The power of the Jewish people <clears throat> to be self sacrifice for Hashem is drawn down into the world. The main thing is what God wants is this physical world, the actual physical land of Israel. And finally, the physical, the whole entire world will be revealed that it's a dwelling for godliness. Come a us, like it's explained in the Gomorrah, man the Isle Dira, a person, Adina, a person that has a court case, a, a jurisdiction, whatever, a, a, a altercation, altercation with a non Jew, he should do everything he can to make. The, the change the venue, change the time so that it should come out in the month of Adar. Why? Because Adar is a month that's healthy for the Jewish people. Shapolis is Gabros Amazal. The Mazal is not just in regarding things of the soul, but also in Torah and the or in, in matters of Torah and the commandments, but also in regards to matters of the world. Even if there happens to be an altercation with the non-Jews, which that's what it is right now, the whole world is against us, the physical world, the United Nations and all this stuff, they're all against us. But the month of Adar is the month that gives us power to show that Jews are not alone. If anyone's alone, it's our enemies. They're the ones that are alone. And we're the ones that are connected to the creator of the universe. And the fact is our enemies are also connected to the creator of the universe, but they just don't want the connection. The purpose of the Jewish people is to make them aware of God's love for them as well, so that they'll start acting in a way that's according to the Torah. And that's the whole idea of Moses. 
and why Moses was born on the seventh day of Adar, this gives power to actually make it happen in the world. As we'll talk about more, God willing, tomorrow. This is now we're going to be talking about Purim. <clears throat> now a yom yom.